And again, that is the newest single from Tolan Shaw called Never Known. I invite you to check out more about Tolan Shaw at tolanshaw.com. That's T-O-L-A-N-S-H-A-W.com. All right, so we are going to continue our energy series here at Pop Song Tech with uh, Papa uh, Papa Ranger. Uh, my my dad is back in studio with us today, and uh, he, he'd like to uh, share uh, a, a proposal to rename uh, the whole podcasting platform as something else. Uh, welcome to the studio, Dad. Yeah, it really, it really. In fact, I thought it was a podcast. See, I'm your pa, and I thought the podcast was when. Dad helped make this broadcast. That's so right. It's the, I think uh, we should call it a podcast when I'm on board. Okay, we will call this the podcast. This is the Pop Song Tech Podcast, uh, and we are here today continuing our conversation uh, with uh, with Papa Ranger uh, on the podcast here uh, about uh, energy. Uh, my my dad spent his career, uh, you know, working for the Department of Energy uh, here in the United States, and uh, continues uh, in the private sector, uh, and uh, he likes to talk a lot. And, uh, you know, so I, 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 sp- I find myself uh, oftentimes at the dinner table or having coffee uh, at breakfast or whatever it happens to be. And uh, my dad just kind of breaks out in random topics of uh, conversation around nuclear power and solar power. And I'm just trying to figure out who won the ball game. Your, your kids have a lot of energy. That, that's one of the things that impressed me. Uh, Otis has a couple baby daughters, uh, or not babies anymore, three-year-olds and uh, four-year-olds. And I got another one on the way. But, uh, you know, I was I was I was listening to them changing the diaper today and I walked into the room and I, I had this smell that was it's kind of an ammonia smell and I said to Nate uh, I'm sorry <laughs> I said to Otis hey Otis you know this ammonia reminds me that we talked about hydrogen as a power source we really should talk about ammonia not not pee but ammonia as a power source so my kids piss in their diaper has motivated you to do this podcast it inspired me <laughs> We all find our inspiration from different places. By by saying we were going to go do a podcast, we got out of changing the diaper. That was the key. That's right. That's right. And it's now uh, turned from a podcast into a P-cast. And uh, <laughs> now we're talking ammonia today. Ammonia, you might say. I said ammonia? Really? Ammonia? Yeah. We went from nuclear power in, uh, on our first show to a hydrogen, hydrogen economy on our second show to something that smells like piss on our third show ammonia here. Ammonia is a great gas. It's, a, it's an NH3. That's one nitrogen and three hydrogens that's for all of you people who forgot your high school chemistry and and that means that if i take ammonia and i can somehow use the energy in it my off gases will be nitrogen which is 80 percent of the air we breathe anyway and hydrogen which gets us back into the last discussion which we had i'm sorry and water i apologize and water which is the uh product which doesn't bother us if it's in air because it's in air all the time yeah yeah now hydrogen was uh produced basically just water alone when you combust it and when you use it in a fuel cell whereas ammonia produces nitrogen and water the Japanese have uh, been pursuing ni- ammonia as a power source because it has higher power density. What that means is if you put a gallon of gasoline in your engine, it will take you in your fuel tank, it will take you a certain number of miles. If you put a gallon of liquefied hydrogen in your tank, it will take you a lesser amount of miles than a gallon of gasoline. Mm. But if you put a gallon of liquefied ammonia in your tank, it takes you farther than the hydrogen, but not as far as the gasoline. I see. Therefore, if you can have a nitri- a, a, an ammonia-based economy, that is, say, ammonia as a fuel source, then it actually has some advantages. Now, uh, now ammonia, uh, are, are we getting to the point that... Um... Do I even go here? The bathroom uh, question. No, no, stay away from the bathroom. <laughs> that that, that uh, I mean, are we are we moving into an economy here? If we move into an ammonia economy, where we're like recycling the output of uh, uh, excretion of humans? Well, you mean whereas cows excrete natural gas and humans is excrete ammonia? Right. Well, I mean, uh, so the manure is good uh, <laughs> in the yard for you know fertilizing plants. Is this your 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 source for fertilizing cars? Well, so in a way, I mean, ammonia. I'm taking us on a different direction. Here. The largest amount of ammonia produced is used for fertilizers. You know, we need the the nitrogen pickup in the in the plant life, and so uh, ammonia is created, uh, produced in the chemical industry largely from natural gas, which is uh, CH4, 
and we take that the hydrogen from that and we take the nitrogen from the air and we create ammonia and of course we produce CO2 boo hiss yeah not we good. don't like that but the ammonia as a source uh, much like hydrogen as a source uh, the byproduct of producing that source is some amount of carbon dioxide emission so it's not without some uh, effect on the on the environment that we create either hydrogen by that mean by by the means of natural gas or ammonia by the means of natural gas. However, in many cases, energy is about where you use it and what you pollute, a, as opposed to where you created it. Mm. And so, mm -hmm. just like electricity, which if I use that in the city to power cars, the cities stay cleaner because there's millions of cars in the right. city. But I produce the electricity out in the mountains somewhere where whatever I'm producing has less effect on the environment, has more time to dissipate and so forth. Yeah, I mean, it could be that uh, in many cases, people are buying their electric cars thinking that they're doing good uh, because they're not polluting the area as a result of their car itself. But that car is powered on electricity. And if on the flip side of that, you've got some plant out in, uh, you know, Oshkosh. rural rural Pennsylvania that's just burning coal. Uh, to produce that energy, you, you know, what good are you really doing for the environment? Not for the world as a whole, but for the pollution where you have to breathe it in highly dense population areas, you're doing a world of good. It's kind of like a flashlight. I like I like to have a flashlight that has a battery because unlike a solar flashlight, which needs light, I want to use it at night. Right. Uh, so, so the, the idea of a solar flashlight probably doesn't make too much uh, sense. Yeah, I was working on that after I finished working on the electric fork, and I, I, the electric fork never seemed to get any, any le leverage <laughs> with anybody. Well, you got a good patent out of it. <laughs> So ammonia is uh, an interesting uh, and something people should be aware of because again the Japanese are using it they're not they're very smart people and and the idea that you can get a high, higher energy per gallon is uh, is a, is an attractive side of it. it it could be used in conjunction with hydrogen as well I think uh, as something Otis was telling me about and, uh, yeah, there's kind of a, some buzz about this. Uh, an ammonia, f uh, an ammonia fueled turbo boost for the hydrogen economy. Uh, companies like Toyota and Nikola are the exception that prove the rule. Uh, the fact is that uh, the need for zero emission vehicles is urgent, uh, according to this blog. This is uh, from uh, Tina Casse, um, and uh, the pace of development is far too slow. That's where the Department of Energy, uh, Papa Ranger's former employer, comes in. Uh, the new round of funding attacks the hydrogen bottleneck from a unique angle rather than focusing strictly on more efficient and less costly ways to compress hydrogen gas. Uh, the agency is looking for systems that use ammonia as a platform. See, ammonia doesn't take as much uh, pressure to liquefy it. Uh, if you remember, you're back to your, uh, your butane lighter. A butane gas doesn't uh, take as much pressure to pressurize it into a liquid. That's why you can put in a little uh, Bic lighter, say. Uh, you, take, uh, you take propane, for example. That, that takes a certain amount of pressure to liquefy it, and mm -hmm. uh, propane takes a, a little bit more uh, to, uh, to compress it. And then you take uh, something like uh, natural gas, CH4, and that takes a lot more pressure to liquefy it. But if you liquefy it, uh, for example, uh, you put in a big tank of liquefied uh, gas, it has a tremendous amount of uh, that gas in the liquid, which you then can vent off into a gas that you can use. So when we use nitrogen, for example, uh, a lot of nitrogen is used in the, in, the, uh, in the various industries because it's somewhat inert. And so you use a liquefied nitrogen source to then create your gas, and that way you don't need as many tanks around. That's much more... Uh, power, uh, sorry, much more dense in the nitrogen by liquefying it, just like ammonia is more dense if you liquefy it, and hydrogen is more dense if you liquefy it. So the question is, how much pressure does it take to liquefy it? Mm. And, nit and ammonia takes less pressure than hydrogen. So if you wanted a liquefied source of gas in your automobile, nit uh, ammonia would take a less, uh, that is say, a lower pressure to get it into liquefied and therefore more power dense form, and you get more mi miles to the gallon for the liquid form. Got it, got it. And so for the uh, for ammonia, then the uh, the byproduct of uh, of hydrogen uh, of burning hydrogen is water, right? Yeah, it's, it's really great because what you see is they had this one demonstration where they had Mercedes Benz and they had they were showing their their hydrogen powered automobile, uh -huh. and on the desk they had a whole bunch of bottles, and the bottles said exhaust. Yeah. You can unscrew the top and drink it. It's just basically water. Yeah, so so you could actually take the exhaust from the car and uh, drink it. You could. Yeah. That's right. 
Uh, that'd be a nice source. Uh, you know, you could just have it kind of pour right back into the car, into water bottles for the kids. <laughs> yeah, and you have uh, a little spigot with ice water. That's right. I like that idea. It's like, uh, I mean, you, you step into a limousine these days, uh, and uh, and oftentimes they've got bottles of water uh, there in the back seats. Daddy, Why... can I have a glass of exhaust, please? <laughs> buy, it, buy it, Junior. That's right. So so ammonia, then, uh, the, the byproduct of ammonia, then, it, what, what is the byproduct of ammonia? Well, you have two byproducts. One is water. One is water. Okay. The, other, the other is nitrogen gas. Nitro- now, do they come out together as one thing, or does it get instantly separated they as both, a result of this? They both and- come out as a vapor. So one comes out as water vapor, the other one comes out as nitrogen gas. Both are gases. I see. But and and are they mixed together yeah. or yeah. so from the fuel cell they would be. Yes. I see. So you wouldn't want to take the output of an ammonia uh, fueled car and put it straight into a bottle. Well, it uh, would because be you'd have some f- nitrogen. It would be fizzy with it would be fizzy with nitrogen gas. I see. And is that safe? Uh, yes, uh, nitrogen is very safe. Uh, 80% of the air we breathe is nitrogen. So obviously uh, everything that I have, for example, if I have air in my water, which I do, mm-hmm. I have nitrogen in my water, which 80% of the air is nitrogen. And is that the uh, you know the fizziness that goes into uh, sodas? And, uh, I'm uh, sorry to tell you this, but the fizziness in soda is carbon dioxide. Boo. Oh, it is. Oh, yeah. I didn't know yeah. that. Oh, yeah. That's what gives you the nice, uh, the, the, the thing that tickles your nose. It's that uh, carbon dioxide, which gives you carbonic acid, which gives you that sort of sharp taste to colas, right? That kind of uh, burns your tongue a little bit. And is that the same thing of, uh, you know, seltzer water? Yes, sir. It's uh, carbon it, dioxide. That's also water. Okay, so that's also carbon. That's a good use of carbon dioxide. Except after you drink it, it comes out as gas. Some part of your body. Right, right, right. We won't talk about where. It, it will inspire a future show, I'm sure, though. Or expire. Expire. Yes, it will expire on a future show here. So, so ammonia uh, rather than hydrogen. Now, ammonia. Uh, in our previous show, when we had talked about hydrogen and a benefit of hydrogen. Uh, being that it could be used to temporarily store energy that comes off of periodic energy sources like wind power and solar power. Is ammonia also in that same category as a uh, uh, kind of a, a, an ancillary enabler to these other clean energy solutions that are periodic? Yes, because it takes energy to produce ammonia by whatever means you produce it. Then using, that, using excess energy to produce uh, ammonia is another option. You don't have the ability, for example, to just e- e- use electrolysis in water to create hydrogen. You have to have uh, you have to have some other chemical processes. Let's talk a little bit about that because when you look at either the hydrogen economy or an ammonia-based economy, uh, one of the problems is you need so much hydrogen or so much ammonia or both, a mixture of the two. Mm-hmm that a tremendous amount of energy is needed just to create the demand. So if I wanted to... Help me understand that more. The, the, well, the demand for what? The, let's say I, I wanted to power all the cars in the United States with hydrogen yes. or with ammonia. The amount of energy it would take me just to produce the hydrogen or the ammonia is a very, very large amount mm. of power. Now, I get that power... Because you've got to separate it out from something else, because hydrogen does not occur naturally. naturally. That's exactly right. Mm-hmm. So so when I'm talking about producing a little bit of something, for example, uh, a little bit of hydrogen, I can create that from uh, methane gas, but then I produce CO2 as an off right. product. So I don't like to do that. Or if I produce it by electrolysis, I have maybe a 25% efficiency, which means to get to get 100, 100 uh, uh, measures of energy, I have to use 400 measures of energy to get it in a, in a way that I can store it in your tank. Mm-hmm. If, I could get, if I could get that 100 units of energy with only 200 units to create it, I would save a tremendous amount of energy in order to create that product that I want to use to a large extent. So if I want an economy based on hydrogen, I really want to look at more and more efficient ways of making hydrogen. Same thing with ammonia. Mm -hmm. So the Department of Energy is looking at uh, different chemical processes, for example, that are non-polluting and which can create hydrogen or ammonia at very high efficiencies. Turns out that uh, many of these processes, or most of these processes, revol- involve some chemical process which requires a very high temperature. Now, when I say very high temperature, mm. I'm talking about 800 degrees Celsius or 900 degrees Celsius. Now, mm. Mm. I'm sorry, it's called, uh, yeah, Celsius. I used to call it centigrade in my day. But that, that high a temperature, just to give you a sense for how hot that is, if I took a piece of iron and I put it at that temperature, it would be glowing orange. Now, if you look at a piping system that's glowing orange, you'd probably want to run away from it. <laughs> 
<laughs> because you think, oh my gosh, something's gonna wrong. Melt. I better run away right. before I'm all, we're all killed. Yeah. And we actually have processes that we were using to produce those temperatures and get those more efficient hydrogen producing and ammonia producing processes. It turns out that a very efficient form of this energy is nuclear power. It takes us all the way back around to our first show here. And what's interesting is uh, our nuclear power nowadays is usually produces power, produces heat at about 350 degrees Celsius. 